<laughs> yo yo, what's up? Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought I'd start it slightly differently today. But anyway, last time we captured Ost in Ethil and we got the ruins of the Gwaithimirdan, the Jewel Smiths Guild in Region, and we got we have now got access to Nolderin Plate, but it is only in this one region, which is a bit of a, no uh, a nuisance uh, because we can't actually train anything. Um, on that side of the mountains, only really here uh, in the forest. But what are we going to try and accomplish today? Well, perhaps we could, we could potentially get uh, Dane's Halls here in the Grey Mountains, potentially. But we have to do something first, and uh, we need to clear out uh, a lot of these armies. But I think we'll start with Captain Laguf, because... Uh, we are actually allied to the dwarves, and we can use that to our advantage, you know. We can send <laughs> their general in to die, uh, the stunty bugger. So, uh, ooh, uh, I was hoping for slightly better odds, but what do they have here? So they've got the Snow Orc Scouts. Okay. Snow Orc Raiders. The Black Shield Archers, they are a bit of a menace. 200 uh, meter range makes them uh, better than, actually, um, certainly the Woodland Scouts. They've got some uh, depleted units on either side. They do have a catapult and two ballistas. That is going to be a real pain in my um, bum. Uh, but we do have two units of cavalry as well. So we can hopefully negate all of that uh, somewhat. And also the Wag Marauders. Now, they also have some Pale Rooks. But again, not very many. They do not have a general. I think we'll be okay. Hopefully, we'll have decent terrain. <laughs> and not just on the side of a mountain. Send them back to their underworld. Well, I am incredibly relieved to see that it is actually flat land that we've been given for this battle today, which is definitely going to aid us, because uh, as they're kind of trying to get into a decent formation, we've actually managed to, you know, already flank with our cavalry, and hopefully we can certainly get rid of this catapult before it got, gets off a single shot. And actually, General, you should be shooting. Just shoot at whatever you can. As long as you get rid of uh, the siege, I think we'll be okay in regards to not taking overly large losses today. However, they do obviously have their own cavalry, which is going to be a real pain because uh, my cavalry is not very good. Uh, but actually, we got we got very lucky there. Um, and uh, over here, we've almost got rid of that ballista. We do need to get rid of those warg marauders. And what's going on over here? Um, well, you guys go into that formation and then uh, just get stuck in. We've taken rid. We've got rid of the catapult. I think you guys can come out of there, go back on fire at will, and I think you can just about go and kill off that ballista now as well. Now they are going to charge into us here, so I'm going to do some sneaky maneuvers. And uh, oh, okay, they're not going to go for it. All right. Well, we're going to start flanking with our units too. So uh, let's get a jiggle on. They have a lot of archers. I was just wondering. Oh, well, we've killed their captain, which is good news. We, they've got so many archers uh, that I was wondering why are we taking so many losses? You know what? Actually, Spears, you just go and chase off those archers as well, and uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna rush them now. And uh, you know what? You guys need to get in on the program as well. Everyone, just charge him! Charge him! We've got rid of all of their siege, I think. Or maybe the, there's something in there. But it's basically just archers now. Although, they have pulled out a small force over there. Just to take out the uh, dwarven leader, interestingly. But uh, I think we're okay to just push out with all of our units. So, go on, lads. Go on. I think the only reason that we're still going is because um, Durin's guard. So, this is uh, the dwarves' own units you can just about see them they're very sturdy but they are probably gonna die I'm just wondering do we do we like care about them I don't know um, <laughs> so how about we just bring all the archers over here they can shoot them uh, I'm not gonna send the cavalry over God no. I'm just going to make sure that we catch as many of these uh, <laughs> to make sure we wipe out the the uh, army 
ally lies dead. Oh dear. Oh dear. Sorry, Mr. Dwarf. Um, <laughs> I kind of abandoned you guys, but uh, you know what? We're not really friends. Like, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't consider you my friend. And they have now finished off with the Turin's guard. Oh, whoopsie. Uh, but then again, I just don't really care. These guys will probably run away immediately, and I don't know where. These Garthinen are. I'm just going to bring them on over. They're looking like they're going for our woodland wardens there, or warriors. So we'll just bring our cavalry over, ready to mop them up. Because how many more do we need? Oh, we've actually we just need to make them rout. They're running, and I don't think the pale rooks can actually run away, which is a bit of a nuisance, actually. Um, or can they run? Oh, not them, not them. Pale rooks. Oh no, they can. So they're just wavering. So we're just waiting for them to go and then we're done here. And there they go. How many killed? Enough. Nice, nice. And who got the most kills? I would reckon it's probably the horse archers. Woodland scouts. Wow. What, really? Woodland scouts. See, our worst archer unit still plowing in with the kills. And we shall strike them all down. Although that would have been a toasty, toasty, a tasty little morsel of a ransom. Now we could actually just go on in there and attack Dane's horse, but I doubt that. They, I mean, they're gonna have someone in there, and we don't have siege equipment. And I'd quite like to hold on to Rakiburg. Now we could attack this army here, but. Uh, we would obviously then have to fight both of those, and if one of them retreated, although I don't think they would retreat, then we'd have to fight three at once, and we don't necessarily, Onward. you know, I'd rather make sure that we hold on to the town, uh, at least until this is built, because um, because then we can kind of just leave one unit in there and then start roaming a little bit, because uh, uh, public order issues. But anyway, uh, what else is there to do this turn? This is still the last or the same turn as the last one, so there's a lot of things that we could build. But, as I, I think last time I mentioned, why don't we attack Isengard? Now, we do have some units here. Now, um, obviously I could actually take these now to over here and get them retrained with spicy armor and they'd Elf get warriors. like, <laughs> they'd become like uber monsters, like plus three armor. But I don't think that's going to be particularly efficient um, use of time because getting over there would uh, be about four turns so it's like ten turns for these guys Onward. I mean obviously not quite that much but anyway I'm just going to put them into that fort and that does obviously save us quite a lot of money they are very expensive to move around I am but an ally, Lord. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mass a force here and then we're going to strike, because that's what we got to do. But we do need a general, so I believe there's one here. Hi, Rion. Now, how much... Oh, he's actually got the healer uh, trait already, which is very good. And um, so, just so you, you can see, uh, plus 5% casualties recovering, which is very good. That's That affects the amount um, at the end of the battle, if you've taken sufficient damage. Uh, there's the column which has casualties healed and that, uh, you know, you get those units back after the battle, even though they died in that battle. Uh, it's a certain percentage of, I think it's 15% or something, 15% of all uh, units that die in a battle, if you win, you get them back. So plus 5%, I think that makes that 20%. And I believe there is a higher uh, tier trait as well for Doctor. Uh, but I think, I do believe, uh, do we have, ba we don't have, how does he have it? We don't have any public baths here. And I'm pretty sure this is where he came in because this is the capital. So, okay, well, anyway, perhaps that comes from public baths. But he, I think, is going to be the guy. He's, well, he is a natural administrator, but he is poor with tactors as well. So... <laughs> Uh, I think we're, we're going to not necessarily lose too much money. There you go. It's only about 100. So he's going to save some money. Now, what about Valanyonnen? Physically flawless. Ooh. 
Um, what else is he? Well, he's he's perhaps not that he hasn't really got anything to boost this town here, but obviously he does boost population growth and things like that. I think and a bit of money, yeah. But 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 I think we will need. Come, my Two generals to sort an army over here. Although we do have Sith Pantheon here somewhere. Where's he? Sith Pantheon. There he is. Um, or well, maybe Sith Pantheon's going to be the chosen one. I don't know what I'm going to do with Thranduil. It's a bit of a shame to not use him for anything. But for right now, I think. And also, he's armor piercing. And Isengard have a lot of armor. But for now, I think I'm just going to keep him in reserve. And see what happens with Mordor. Because if they were to attack us. Then they'd get very far before we could actually stop them. Now I'm hoping. I'm just kind of praying that Dorwinian attacks them. Because I don't necessarily want to attack them. Because of the Gondor campaign. So I'm going to focus on different enemies. And uh, Dunland are quite an intriguing enemy. Because it's just something you will never see in the Woodland Realm ever fight. And... Uh, we obviously can't fight Mordor, Isengard, Gundabad, and Dunland all at the same time. There's just no way. Um, <laughs> I mean, we could. It would be quite interesting to see that, I guess. But to bolster our force, I am. We've got a lot of elites. We've got two more units of Elven Kings, Axe Guard, and Gate Guard coming. So we've got uh, six forces there. But we can't just have an army of just elites or like semi elites. We do actually have to fill out the ranks with some of our trashy units but here's some so um, I think what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to send them back to Minas Laskal and get them with armor because we can actually very easily upgrade these with like plus two armor and that will help us particularly against arrow fire for our, our archers and then here we've got some units as well but I think I might just leave them there for now um, but how about we get some woodland sentinels from Erin Amderion, and that's all that we're getting. Because uh, archers, even though they, they aren't armor-piercing, eight missile attack is substantial, and they're decent in melee. But what else have I done? I've put a barracks then in to the queue over in Erin Dolan, so we can actually train more melee units up here in the north. Uh, to aid us in Gundabad, and also because it is a castle, it's very, very useless to us if it can't train any troops. Um, so, <laughs> there we go. We can't really train anything anymore from Thranduil's Halls for now, because it is completely expended. But, didn't we have... Okay, Hinadara almost Onward. there, and then I'll get them to come out with... Oh, we've got some Elven Kings, Bogard and Arthi Rohan. Very nice. And what else did I put in the queue? Um, there was something. There was something. I just did it. Uh, I just did it off camera. Um, I think... Oh, yeah. It, so, it was another barracks in Erin Amderion. Because we need to make sure that we can recruit sufficient amounts of... Not particularly these units. We don't need loads of these guys. But the ones that we do need are uh, these ones. Because they are our only armor-piercing melee force and they will be key in any offensive war against a high armor nation but that is everything for this turn i think um how about we send the spy the spy could be quite useful maybe just to check out dunland over here see what they're doing oh there is a force there quite interesting and uh, oh and mardian how about you just go first build a tower there we do still have money for that yes we will need that one we will need that one. Um, you are correct. And then you go there. And hopefully that will trigger the one ring script from there. But let's have a look what happens over the end turn. Yikes. <laughs> How did they get another stack? I don't understand. Broken and battered, the orcs of the Misty Mountains, which is the former name of the goblins of Moria, have suffered defeat after defeat on all sides. <laughs> Oh, and the steward stands proud. Which one is that? I've lost count, but um, so many have died. And they definitely do not hold Minas Tirith anymore, but basically, I mean, you can read that if you wish. Uh, Gondor, that is their last uh, scripted in army, so they are very much down to their last. And Mountain Orcs scatter. How do they get so many stacks? Like, I don't understand. That was like them going down to two regions. Or do we take...
Yeah, that's that's them going down to two regions and they get another one because they only have this one. And we took this one last turn and that was the turn before that uh, or so. Oh, and uh, what you also saw there was the commencing of the One Ring script as our uh, uh, noble general has gone in there. And Dunlendings have attacked Northern Dunedain. I kind of imagine they already had. Now, we're not allied to them. So, if they were to attack this army, we won't get the option to join in. And I'm thinking, what if we should? Where is our agent? Yes. Oh, he's down in Lamadon. Um, probably checking yes. it. Oh, because... <laughs> oh, he's going to be so long before he comes back. I might just cheat move As him. Um, yes. Because uh, we just won't see that. But Dol Amroth still have... Um, Dol Amroth proper, I guess. They have... Dol Amroth, <laughs> and uh, they have a Theland. But uh, Gondor are just oh, they're so rubbish. Bone recruitment report. Oh, and we can actually get some <laughs> nice. We this is this is getting real spicy now, um, because now we can recruit our best units up here. They don't have any armor upgrades at all over here, so they're not as good here as they would be down in the south. But still very, very good. But they are very pricey. Like 1,300 to recruit a unit. And four turns as well. Um, which kind of, you know, that's why elves kind of... They're very good, but their low numbers means that they're also very bad. But we can get the armor here. And I think it's worth getting that. So I will. Um, <laughs> basically, Beralge, you got... The master or the builder's guild house, rather. Uh, <laughs> so we get things extra cheap, extra quick, and so how much does a merchant's wharf give us? Um, oh, wrong thing, wrong thing. Uh, oh, it gives it gives almost two hundred. Well, it gives actually more than two hundred. In fact, it gives three hundred. <laughs> so three hundred. Um, let's get that. Yeah, solid. Although, how much does a market give? That also only takes three turns now, rather than four or five. And that gives 60... It gives, oh, ooh. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, but that gives us more. So I'd rather get that. <laughs> but Burrouge, I think, is going to start making us a lot of money. Not like um, Moria amounts of money. But did we just build this? Oh, okay. Uh, but it will make us a lot of money. And Dorthaloo, uh, ah, I could get a, a Builder's Guild House here as well. How much do roads buff? Quite a lot. I mean, it doubles trade, but the trade amount currently isn't a whole lot at all. Um, so, you know what? You just get a, <laughs> that as well. That's the just to make things cheaper and faster to make. Oh, and they didn't even have seizures here in Rakiburg. That's peculiar. I thought that they would have. And the dwarves do look like they're moving on um, Dane's Halls, which would be a bit of a shame for me, because I'd want it. I mean, I don't care so much about Withered Heath, but I did say last time that I'd rather get Bramsburg, um, because you know I don't think the dwarves are going to just walt waltz in there and get it immediately. But I think an art gallery here in Rakiburg is essential uh, because we will need that culture so that then we can actually move our army out. So that's already all of our money spent for this turn. End of turn report. Uh, we are number one still in terms of production. Uh, financially, we're not very good. Militarily, we're also in the pits. But population-wise, we're doing all right. That doesn't mean a whole lot. It just means that we've got... A lot of large or huge cities. Now, oh, hopefully we can retrain them. Can we retrain? Oh, that's 725 gold. I wonder if we can just sell something with our diplomat real quick. Yes, my lord. We've already moved him. That's a bit annoying. Well, I mean, we don't need to move out right this moment, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Falas Nornion. Um, I don't know if they... Dorwinion, what are they doing? Um... Are they moving out? Approaching quiet. Dorwinian have a captain here, Captain Holger. Holger. Um, <laughs> he's coming with some really rubbish units. 
I don't think he's going to be attacking Mordor, but perhaps he will. Because he's probably looking at this settlement over here and thinking they can beat that in auto resolve. Because that's all the AI thinks about. So maybe they're going to go for that. Now, oh, thank God they are going to be free because otherwise we might have been in a bit of a pickle. But we've got a lot of units coming in for retraining in that region. Do we still have... Oh, yes. So we're just moving troops around here. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I kind of forgot about this just as I was speaking. Hopefully this army... Uh, they... Oh, look at them. They're really good. Hopefully they don't attack us. Now, the reason I think they're going to totally bypass us is because they don't like to attack regions they do not border. So... As they only hold Rudaur Upland, um, they don't actually border us here in Loudwater Fields. They might attack Imladris, or they might attack here in uh, Fennas Drunen, or, or the Angle, or the Hidden Valley. So I think currently we're in the clear. And if they were to attack Imladris, uh, Imladris, um, I think they'd be they'd be beaten because <laughs> Rivendell are very, uh, or the garrison there will be quite substantial, I'm pretty sure. And, um, like, the, I'm sure the shields will be quite operational. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. That was a bad Star Wars reference. Like, the actual Star Wars, not the, not the rubbish that they now make. But uh, I don't think there's anything we can do. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think what we should do is take out this force. So that's what I'm going to do now. And uh, they have no artillery. They've got snow orc spears. We've seen these guys before. Same as these guys. And um, yeah. We've seen all of this before. But there's not a whole lot there. We will be able to beat them. We have been well and truly blessed with this battle. Map, look at that hill. Um... <laughs> There is no way that we could, um, I mean, we're not going to have, lose this anyway, but if we were going to lose it, which we're not, we wouldn't, because we've got the hill. So, uh, I mean, if they want to just trade missile fire, then I'm more than happy to uh, let them do that, but they're not going to. They're going to charge at us, and I didn't even realise in the last battle, we took a heavy beating uh, of our, on our woodland warriors there, but uh, it's not too bad. So we've got actually quite a nice pincer movement here with uh, our cavalry. We just come right up in the rear and uh, once we've expended our arrows we'll be free to just chase them off the battlefield. But I can't just uh, sit back in my lounge and let it autoplay because uh, they're, they're trying, to, trying to catch my cavalry, you know. And uh, I don't like using skirmish mode. Um, do you use skirmish mode? Um, I'd be actually, do you even play this game? That's a, that's a, another question. How many of you actually play this mod? And if you do play this mod, are you aware that DCI Last Alliance is coming out very soon? I'm quite excited for that. Um, and I'll be covering it on this channel. And I, oh my word, I just realized our general is getting absolutely pounded. So let's get on in there and uh, save him, shall we? And, uh, oh, we've got these guys. We've got our axes coming in the rear with their arm piercing stuff and uh, let's turn you off uh, actually no yeah keep firing at will just don't fire at these units here now hopefully our general doesn't die because uh, that would be really really annoying quite frankly so I think what we're going to do is send in our cavalry just to shoot them right up in the backside and I tell you what all of our archers just shoot um, their archers here Whereas, oh, they're all routing. Oh, okay. Um, see, that is why you want a general in your army. If you're playing, even as the Orcs of Gundabad, because they're not very good. I wonder if um, how much these guys play a part in that, because they're so spooky and scary um, that they reduce enemy morale. But, uh, well, we're going to make sure that we catch all these. Be awed by the victory we have won here today. We lost 60 noble elves. And who got the most kills? Let's have a look. Woodland horse archers with 120. And otherwise it was once again the woodland scouts. 
killing these off has severely put a large dent in the military presence of the Orcs of Gundabad. And actually, if we just had someone... I don't... Yes, okay. I'll tell you what. Theronta, if you want to come over here and um, leave <laughs> Tower Filim, you could maybe go into Rakiburg and hold fort there. At least until, uh, you know, we can send someone else over here. Like, uh, then, then we can move this army out and maybe attack Gundabad. Because we can't really leave it undefended. Because what they'll probably just do is go straight on in there. Shall we see what happens over the end turn with this large stack? I'm predicting it's going to walk to right outside Anon Enorod and uh, look very threatening. Interestingly, I... Oh, 2,000 gold coins. Thank you very much. And uh, we've got a lot of money now for the start of this turn, which is um, relatively exciting. But <laughs> here we have the White Council's Dilemma. And uh, you can press decline if you'll, and you'll receive several resources from the Council to aid you in your quest and the gratitude of all good factions. If you press accept... There would be a small diplomatic penalty with every good faction, but you'll get rid of that cursed ring. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the One Ring script because it just seems it just seems very haphazard, and you know you have to come all the way down here. I mean, it's I, I guess it's not too far, but maybe I'll do that in the Gondor campaign. It's, it makes more sense to do it in the Gondor campaign rather than, you know, as the Woodland Realm. Because it, it's just a real hassle. And you can kind of get around it um, in the sense that you could um, just have two, I think, or is it three full, like, doom stacks, as it were, around the carrier. And no army will ever attack you because they'll see that the others are in reinforcement range. And you will just get... You can just walk into Mordor without any opposition. And uh, so I am going to... Wait, which one is it? I'm going to accept. Um, because I would rather that... I want to do what Isildur wanted to do. And relinquish the One Ring to Elrond. Um, until he died. He he died uh, somewhere around here. Uh, <laughs> in the Gladden fields. But, yeah. Wait, did I do that right? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> Some weird noises in the microphone there. Um, but, um, okay. But anyway, it's it's gone now. It's gone. We can move on. Austin Gale got a market. Excellent, excellent, excellent. It doesn't make loads of money. It makes a little bit of money. But uh, I think what... I mean, we can't get the top tier of range here yet. It needs to become a city. So that's like when we get our elite archers, which is kind of when a city would be useful to us in that regard at this stage in the campaign. And Tarfilin, oh, that got the market, which actually now can trade with Rakiburg, which makes uh, it makes some money. We've got okay trade routes with it, but it really just needs to grow. So I'm going to get some communal farming, which also, like in my Gondor campaign, people are saying, you know, build more farms, um, which are very good. But uh, markets, or particularly grain exchanges, have the best return rate uh, over, you know, the same tier, of, like over land clearance. But we do need that population growth. And the other alternative is a public fountain, which obviously gives no benefit to income at all. So I'd rather get the farm Austin Ethil. We can already get you into a city. Uh, which would be smashing. Um, oh, that actually would be really good. Because if... Oh, it's knocked the mic. But if we can train troops here, you know, then we can automatically give them the bonus. And I can already tell you that I've forgotten to train or retrain these units here. So... Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah, let's go for the city. It's only four turns. And then we can make it look like a proper elven city rather than a Dunedain. Or that's kind of like... Yeah, Dunedain have like... That's like a Northman town, I think. But Dunedain have a very odd culture until they get to like city level, which is when they start building 
like Gondor do. But, oh yeah, so we've already done that, we've already done that. Like, move on. Um, <laughs> but, oh, as I predicted, Lunher has moved um, this way, and probably next turn it'll move towards Bruinos. But High Lord Elrond, the aggressive, um, please no attack me, but, oh, look how cool these units are. I I really like, um, well, I really enjoy playing as um, Imladris. Not so much as Mithlond, but they've now been merged into one faction to make way um, for unit space, generally. But they just have really cool-looking units all the same, and the Noldor veterans are, like, they're um, elite they're like on the same level as our uh, Elven King's uh, swordsmen or whatever they're called. They, they've they changed their name, so I've forgotten. What are they called? A gate guard? Is it gate guard? Yeah, so they have a 20 attack with 2 experience. So they're more like 19 attack 26, where we've got 18, 22. So we have less armor than our bros on the other side of the uh, of the wall. So we can at least move Mardin back, but before we do, let's just build a watchtower there. Oh, we can't quite see his Agkala. I didn't want to put it right on the road. Uh, but uh, hopefully he doesn't die there. But um, if he does get attacked, I'll just auto-resolve it and hopefully he moves back away from there. And so you just uh, move on into that fort. Eromolian probably can't move out of there. No, he definitely can't. And, oh dear, yep, yeah. Isengard with Captain Krolg is already moving on <laughs> limb here. Uh, so we do have to get a bit of a jiggle on because there's even more forces. And as Isengard only have a few enemies in Gondor and Lothlorien, they are definitely going to be going for them. So what we need to do is retrain all the forces that need retraining. So these guys can actually move out now. Um, I tell you what, you just move out over here. And uh, where are those generals? Where are those generals? Hyrion is already here. Oh, that's good. Can he get... We, he, I don't think he can get upgraded. No, he can't. Uh, these guys also can get upgraded. Um, I'm pretty sure they can. Um, yes, they can. Um, but again, they're just too far away. And Sith Pantheon. Where do we want a tower? Let's, let's build one right there. And Sith Pantheon, I think... Are you... What kind of are your... Yeah, you're very uh, anti-Mordor in your beliefs. <laughs> so, but you're going to come back over here and you're going to head one of the armies. And Valayonnen, uh, before you, or Valayonnen, uh, you're going to build a tower there and then you're going to move this way. Building a couple towers on the way, actually. So that's going to move, uh, move us along quite nicely. Now, what's happening up here in Gundabad, or the Gundabad region? For the light! I'll tell you what, we're just going to take out this one more force here. Them. They do have some half trolls. But I think, I think we will be able to kill them off before they reach our lines, hopefully. Although, um, they might get a few of their javelins off, which will be bad, obviously. They, we just have to watch out also for the ballista. And I think that's all that is to worry about here. Oh, they've got some Bolg's champions. They are a halberd unit as well. Um, not quite as good as our halberd unit, but very good for an orc. Send them back to their underworld. Okay, well, same again then, shall we, chaps? Uh, so we'll just send the horse archers round again. And we we are attracting the attention of their wogs over here, but uh, nothing to worry about, really. And over here, well, let's just take out these ballistas ASAP whilst our bros with the bows uh, shoot them all up. And hopefully... Um, well, yeah, these wogs are never going to catch us because we are faster. And even if they do, they're not going to win. Um, <laughs> um, these guys are better in melee than they are. And also they have a bonus against them specifically. So stop shooting now, Woodland Horse Archers, and just go into melee. They seem to have left them for dead. Now, we might get caught here because, yeah, we only just started moving there. So I'll tell you what, just get in. Get in there, get stuck in. And uh, just to remind you of the stats... 10 attack, 12 defense on those guys. They do have a bonus against us, but um, we are 10 attack, 14 defense, and also get a bonus against them. Or it says here that we have a bonus. I don't know if we do. Uh, let's see what goes on here. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do... This is like a science experiment. 
Oh, and we're getting caught out over here. The mounting guard, one of their generals, is coming for us. Now, just judging by the amount of damage we're taking... Oh, no, now it's going down. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we probably don't get a bonus against them. We're only winning so handedly because we actually have um, such a numerical advantage. We probably shouldn't have our general so far out on the front line because we will lose to the mounting guard. Um, so, oh, and what's going on over here? They've sent some guys over there against us. We wiped out that unit completely now. Our general has been caught, although he himself is not fighting. Let's just take them off. Uh, yeah, just go against them. But uh, we've got our uh, axemen coming this way, so we'll be fine. And uh, let's just get out. Oh, they've got the half trolls there. I forgot about them. Yep. Yeah, so let's just shoot the half trolls um, rather than getting letting them get too close. So we've got the archers going for them. And uh, get stuck in there, guys. I don't think uh, we're, we're not going to be able to shoot the half trolls. Oh, but we do have our javelin men over here. Perhaps they can help. Now, our cavalry have been kind of caught over there somehow. So I just put them on skirmish. But they've, they've been doing that weird charge. Like one guy charges across the map and hits us. Um, and has us in melee. So... Um, well, the snow, or the half trolls are somewhere in there, probably absolutely annihilating us. So, let's just get stuck in with our line here. And we've got woodland wardens here, ready to shoot the half trolls. But I don't think it's particularly good, because they're not that big of a target. And there's only two of them left anyway. So, I'll tell you what, just go throw your javelins at those guys. You see the difference here, what a general makes. Because in the previous battle, they would have already run at this point where we've absolutely annihilated what was here you can't even <laughs> I think there's actually just the general there and um, well here's another one but they're still fighting so uh, yeah we'll we'll keep on we'll keep on shooting them and hopefully they'll go away <laughs> one of the generals has gone uh, who was that Musgor he is now gone to meet his well, his maker. Well, no, he hasn't actually. Because that's what, what, what happens to orcs. Um, there we go. The uh, Azog look alike there from the films, kind of. Now, who's still fighting? There's still some uh, Black Shield warband over here. There we go. There we go. Pursue and run them down. Um, we do not have to actually go for anyone else. We've already this killed them all. But they did stand and fight a lot longer. Look at that. Woodland Scouts once again. <laughs> a small amount of captives, captives this time. But the enemy camp has been sacked. And uh, a few generals fall there. And we did, of course, actually kill their king not too long ago. So they're probably not huge fans of that. Now, what I'm going to do is... With our remaining movement, I just want to see how close do we have to get? Oh my word. Go there. Okay. And we can still make it back. Now, how much... That's like a half banner army there. I mean, we certainly can't take it with what we've got because I'm sure that they'll get some kind of added... Like, they'll get extra units in there. Oh, I didn't realise it was the next turn already. But <laughs> you go in there then. And oh, and we will be sure to retrain all of our units this time. And then we'll move them out. And then perhaps with um, particular, uh, with what we've got here, um, we'll be able to move out. I didn't realise we had a general in there as well, in Erudaron. Um, we've got all kinds of generals everywhere. I didn't even realise. Um but, 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 I think, uh, no, we'll give it an end turn. We'll give it an end turn. Let's, let's pop everyone in. So you retrain, all of you retrain, and uh, we don't need to put them in the queue just yet. And over here as well, Legolas retrain, and um, yeah, you all retrain as well. I think next turn as well, we'll have to check out Bruinos, because there's a lot of damaged units in there that we need to move out or move along 
And let's put those in the queue as well and uh, put those in as well. And those. <laughs> Just to make sure that it keeps on replenishing the pool. We may as well put those guys in as well. Uh, but no, not yet. Any retraining here? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Let's get all of those for the oncoming tide. And let's give it an end and turn. As you can see, I kind of forgot to move our diplomats. So, um, well, it's a minor thing. <laughs> it's very not useful. And, uh, oh, and this line is for come, this fella. Brothers. So, come, like come, come, come. Stay and alert. path blocked. Oh, that's why you always need to move your diplomat, diplomat manually, because they just get blocked all the goddamn time. Dantalad, you get an upgrade now as well. Blimey, everyone's getting upgrades, and uh, our money is going to soon start going through the roof. Uh, I think it's approaching that point in the game where... <laughs> The, the steamroll is about to commence. Uh, once you have too much money, or so much money that you can't spend it in a single turn, um, you know you're on the path to victory. And speaking of paths, uh, we've got one here. And um, we built that Hall of Culture. Now, uh, Captain Gazlor isn't going to necessarily come for us straight away. I'd be very surprised if they immediately just declared war on us like that when there's still an enemy here and Gondor alive. But let's just have a quick look at our... Um, right. <laughs> they may be about to declare war on us. What are our... Well, I doubt it because they're apparently our relations are perf... Oh wait, that's the Andwin Vale. Um, well, yeah, of course they like us. Uh, where are Dunland? Where are Dunland? Dunland! Well, they have an immaculate reputation, so I don't know if that means that they're less likely to start a war. But our relations aren't terrible, and they are at war with the Northern Dunedain. So, I would have thought they'd just be going up here, because there's a crossing point here into the Lone Lands. Um, and they're just following the road. But if they do attack us... That would be very annoying, because Dunland have... They're not they're not great, but they're not bad either. But let's just have a look at Legolas then. So let's check out his armor. Yep, so 15 at 22, as opposed to... Uh, what What is the... Uh, oh, uh, what is the stock one? 11 and 18. Um, of course, these guys will probably never get... Or well, they can't get a melee weapon bonus like Legolas does. Uh, because the game won't allow that. You have to manually do it in the files. Because a missile unit won't get a melee weapon bonus. So that's a bit sad. But uh, what else did we actually get? Oh, so our Woodland Scouts are now far better. 7 attack with their melee weapon. And uh, 13 total defense. So they've got more resistance to... They're not so much of a glass cannon anymore. Which is great. But... Uh, and then over... Where else did we do some retraining? Oh yes, so we retrained these guys. So we've got a lot of experience now on some of our units. Which, it doesn't account for a whole lot, but it does make them a little bit better. So, that's fantastic. And this is going to set us up in good stead for our war against Isengard. Now, I thought it would go a bit quicker, but... Um, it just takes longer to, you know, train your units as elves. It takes like four turns for your best troops. And uh, one of these episodes takes over the course of about three turns. It's quite difficult. I try and speed things up, but I just feel like talking all the time. So uh, <laughs> it's quite difficult. But we've got some more units coming from over here. And uh, so perhaps next turn. But Dunland might just begin the war prematurely. And then up here in the north we will soon be able to strike out from here as we've cleaned up the mess that Gundabad have been spoiling on our doorstep and uh, we've got units in reinforcement but I think this army here could potentially take Dane's Halls if it wasn't already <laughs> under siege but perhaps they'll fail or the dwarves so we'll look to snipe that if they do fail but thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and enjoy your weekend. But I am game with Gandalf. Good day.